Okay, so previously I talked about the first asymptotic property of OLS estimator and that was the consistency. And what this consistency tells us that if n gets larger and larger, that is when n goes to infinity, our estimated value of any beta coefficient get closer and closer to the population value. And we see that this is an important property of OLS estimator. But to make statistical inferences, we need the sampling distribution of this error term in the population. It will allow us to use f-test and the t-test to make statistical inferences about these coefficient values. In this video, I'm going to talk about the second property of OLS asymptotics and that is the normality. And this normality will help us to know more about the sampling distribution of this error term. Okay, so what normality implies is that a variable is normal when it is symmetrically distributed around its mean value. And if a variable is normally distributed, we'll get this normal bell-shaped curve. Sigma is the standard deviation of this distribution. And this is two times standard deviation. So we say that the total area within two standard deviation of the mean comprises of 95% of the area. And this area beyond this 95% is only 2.5% on each side. And this helps us to use F-test and T-test when our sample is finite. So if this distribution is not normal around mean mu and sigma squared, then we'll get wrong F-test and T-test value. However, if our n is large, both f-test and t-test are fine. So we can use uh, f-test and uh, t-test when f n gets larger and larger. And this follows from central limit theorem and law of large numbers. If you're not familiar with the central limit theorem from your statistics class, I would encourage you to go ahead and revisit this concept because this is one of the most important concept in statistics. Okay, in many cases, as we saw in the example of number of arrests, that the variable number of arrests in 1986, it's not normally distributed. Here is another example of a variable which is not normally distributed. And we saw this model where we were trying to explain participation percentage P rate in 401k pension plan. And the frequency distribution, also called the histogram, it shows us the distribution of the P rate. And I'm going to show you this participation rate. And then on top of this, I'm going to place a normal curve. As we can see here that the participation rate, it's not normally distributed. In fact, over 40% of the observations on the participation rate are at the value 100. As we can see here, this curve doesn't look anywhere closer to the normal curve that I showed you earlier, which implies that participation rate is not normally distributed. What we are saying here is that when n gets larger and larger, our f-test value and t-test value are still valid. We said that f-test and t-tests are not valid if a variable is not normally distributed because we cannot make statistical inferences using this curve and area under the curve. But if the sample size is large enough, then F-test and T-tests both are valid and we can use both of those tests to make statistical inferences. Now the question is, how large should our sample size be? Some economists think that N equals 30 or above means it's large enough. However, this number is not sufficient for all possible distributions of u. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to talk about the asymptotic t-test and asymptotic standard error of OLS. And then I'm going to show you an example in R. All right, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.